everyone loves to claim the magisterial reformation for their own. Everyone wants to be a reformer in that particular way. Everyone wants to be associated with Martin Luther raising his fist at the Diet of Worms and standing against the Catholic Church. But take God's principles of biblical reformation and apply them to the church in a practical, daily, living, and manner, well, then that's a story that's altogether different as to whether or not people really want to reform both themselves and see the reformation of the church. Because biblical reformation often drives people, oftentimes, out of the church. I've put together a work setting down five important principles concerning biblical reformation. The title of the work is Five Marks of Biblical Reformation. How many ministers have you met with that sow reformation in their church in tears? Or for that matter, what about you in that particular way? Is that something that you pray about all the time? To see God's church reformed. In our day, the current temperature of the evangelical church really centers around how to get people to come to church just because of the entertainment nature of our society. They have to do things to placate people. So it's watered down by shallow, non-doctrinal, sound preaching and instead little sermonettes that tickle the ears and they woo people into the pews in that particular way. And as a result, people attend those churches based on criteria like whether or not the lattes are hot or cold in the church foyer. Or, what do we have for the children at church? Or, what ministries does the church have that will minister to me? This work surrounds key topics as to what constitutes actually what biblical reform really is. I cover an introduction to reforming, the first mark being spiritual growth and what that means as it relates to biblical reformation. Mark two, guarding the heart and what that means. Mark three, rejecting partial reformation and how that hinders growth in the church. Mark four, reformation in prayer. Look through the history of the church and you see that public prayer, prayer when the church comes together, is present at every major revival and reformation of the church. And Mark 5, how the Holy Spirit deals with churches and people in biblical reformation. Then I have an appendix. I want to be reformed. I want to be reformed as a person in that biblical idea. So in addition to taking all this in and considering it in the church, we need to see true biblical reformation as affecting every single sphere of our life, not only at church, not only in our private devotions, but everywhere. The workplace, the state, the country that we live in, the home, the church, we want to do everything that we can to take the principles of biblical reformation and arrest our lives, church, and culture for the glory of the great King, Jesus Christ, and the kingdom of God. It may be said that the apostles, when they strove for biblical reformation under the Spirit's leading and power, quote, these that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. Acts 17, 6. Would they say that about you? Would they say that about your church? Would the world look at your church and your life and say, They've turned the world upside down for biblical reformation. This work is available right now at Puritan Publications in both ebook and print form. Go to www.puritanpublications.com for more information about this work in all its formats. And may the Lord bless you as you read and study and consider what it means to be biblically reformed according to God's principles.